victims of the past are long gone as OI and train charge up the hill. Better, but the warm weather is com coming at many point. The weather forecast called rise with calls for many blizzard. And you can see windy point up in the background. Past the highway 17. Now we're going to try hard at the windy point, the heavy pile of snow. the drama of the rotary and its train going back and forth, making run after run into the huge drifts.
train at long last attains the summit at Coombers Pass. Get out. Get out. John Norwood Sr. worked as an agent for many years on the Rio Grande and recalls the heavy snows that he found in Congress when he was working there temporarily in 1930. The old agent got sick and had to lay off. He got away before the storm and he got a hold of me down at Monero and got me up there. <laughs> and he didn't see us. He didn't see us. Finding a ride at Kermit's Pass, he could still continue on his journey. But by now, once they get to the Kermit, at the Kermit's, train will stop. We will stop the train. We will shove the switches. The railways will be put it open, so we can open the Kermit's. So four and eight will turn the Chama and couple up the special train. It will follow the war talk for will follow the watery. And then four and seven will continue on. Towards Orchard, Colorado, the special train would turn to Chama. It will be waiting for grand rain for reopening at Cormac Soltech Scenic Railroad. Oh, I don't remember the word coming. No more coming. Section and the rumble was out there really working because 
Uh, they were either shoveling snow away from switches or they were shoveling coal from one uh, yeah. gauge coal car into the rotary or to the engines that was pushing it. Most of the time you were doing it in blizzard conditions when the snow was yeah. blowing and you couldn't see anything. Yeah. And if you're yeah. familiar with cumbers in the wintertime time. There, yeah. and you get one of those storms, you can't even yeah. stand up yeah. out there yeah. without the wind just yeah. taking your breath away right. from you. It's just that strong there. Yeah. There was a lot of snow to be shoveled to get in and out. A lot of popcorn brains. In the uh, uh, years that I so, spent up there. I had to wait for the weather better parents, Charles and Ida on, Charles on Sunday. Was the then the workers can come back and clean the rest of the Charles switch so we can move to special train. Ken administers the photo collection today and remembers what the winters were like when he was growing up. We had anywhere from uh, 11 feet fall during the winter up until uh, until in the uh, winter of 31 and 32, there was 41 foot and 4 inches of snow fell there. And 33 and 36, some winters, 30, 29, 28. But uh, th there was uh, a few winters when there would only be 14 or 15 foot of snow fall there. Usually after we'd had a winter with real heavy snow, why we'd have a light winter. But uh, there was plenty. In addition to the work on the railroad, the Liveleys also had a gas station and store they ran during the summer months. In the winter, though, there wasn't much demand for gasoline. One would think that with all the snow, one would feel lonely and isolated. I don't know. I kind of enjoy it. I used to ski all the time. I ran a trap line and had traps out on some of the ridges. We had the uh, telegraph wires and, and of course, uh, in uh, those days, it wasn't any such thing as a television, and uh, we had a radio, and I don't remember what year the radios first came into use, but we had a radio that we listened to, and, and uh, uh, we were uh, looking forward to the trains coming. At an elevation of 10,015 feet, snow is something that was taken for granted at Cumbres. In addition to the occasional runs of the rotary, there was an elaborate system of snow sheds in the area to help keep the line open. Although snow at Cumbres is a fact of life, it is not something to be taken lightly. Here we see a flanger train from Alamosa that derailed within walking distance of the summit. Today we encounter no problems as the OY chews its way through the snow and opens Cumbres for service. So we will open, open a corn brace pass for service. So, so my friend three, engine number four and eight, to go get to his special train ready to head to summit the corn brace. But she needs a rescue, so I'm going to rescue the engine number four and eight, the special train, and once to get to the corn brace, the train will. Engine number 48 will take on water, fill the tender and current brace. And while go back to watery, the engine number 48 had to wait for a bit while the passengers need some food on the train. So we can watch the so the photographer will photograph engine of the watery snowplow for the collection. snow. 